Welcome to the very first lesson in our beginner rhythm and counting series. It's a wonderful course that's going to help everybody just skyrocket in their abilities with rhythm and counting and really everything to do with music because it all works together. I tell my students all the time, rhythm is number one. If you don't have the correct rhythm, if you don't understand the rhythm you're playing, then what's the point of playing the notes at all because it won't even make any sense to anybody else. But let's get down into it. And we have a few things to talk about before we actually get into the very first big lesson. One is the sheet that I'm going to be using in this lesson is free for you to download. If you're watching on YouTube or you are on my website, you can look in the description below and you can find a link to download that sheet. It's a PDF. You can print it out. You can print it a thousand times if you really want to and just do it over and over and over again. And the rest of it you can find on my website, and the link is also in the video description below if you are on YouTube. Now, my website is proteanman.com, and you can either just go to courses and hover down to music education, or you can type in proteanman.com slash music dash education, and you can find this course along with other courses that I'm constantly developing and working on all the time. There's more coming. And it just takes a bit of time to create these things and put them all in a nice and pretty package for all of you to use. If you want to look at this course, it's the beginner rhythm and counting course. If you click this image or just the button below, you will be directed to this page right here where you can see the first page we'll be using today. And you can see an introduction video about this course among with other things. And when you get this package, you will be getting an email link to download the actual zip file. You can decompress it, open it up, and use it forever. That link will be good forever. So do not delete the email if you get this package. The link is good forever. If you have a problem with the link, please send me a message. You can always go to my contact at the very top, or you can even, for anything else too, you can just ask me a question, give me a comment, submit some ideas. I'm open to everything. I will answer you as soon as I possibly can, but I do get quite a few emails these days, so I will do my best with all of that. You can also leave a comment in the video description below on YouTube or wherever you're watching this, and I will try to contact you or even just answer your questions there as well. So that's that, and we're going to get right into the course itself. It's a wonderful course, and you are in the right place. Whether you are getting the package or not, this first video in this sheet is free for you to just download, so by all means do that. Now before we get going, I want to talk about a very few but important rules to do with reading music, reading rhythms really. And these rules might be different for other people, but for me and this course and for all my students, these rules have ensured success. I've had over a decade with this exact course you are watching right now, over a decade of success with my students. It has just skyrocketed their abilities. And I've had groups that perform absolutely difficult music compared to their peers. So I want to encourage you to just follow along. Even if you disagree, that's totally fine. If you're a teacher and you're following along, do it your own way. I want you to do it your own way. But just realize that I might say things that might be different and Take it all with a bit of a grain of salt, and I'm sure you're going to understand where I'm coming from, and I will explain where I'm coming from as well. Here we go. Rule number one is to show each beat. You can call it a pulse. You can call it the weight in the music. You can call it whatever you want. I'll talk about this more as well in a minute, but you must show me each beat. Rule number two is only show what's needed. This kind of works in a few ways. One way being... You don't want to put too many things under your music when you're counting it out. When you're writing on these sheets, the same rule applies. You only need to put what's needed. Don't put extra stuff. If there's not a note there or not a rest there, don't put something there because it's going to confuse you. And this also goes to the opposite way of if there is something there, you have to show me something. So only show what's needed works in the negative and the positive ways on what's there and what's not there. And the third rule which I tell my students is mostly for me because I write big and flowy, uh, is write clearly and concisely. This is mostly to save you from causing errors down the road because you're, you are your worst enemy. You are your worst boss. 
And you have to make sure that you're doing this as, as neatly and concisely as you can. And that way, you're not going to cause unnecessary errors because those things can be frustrating. I can tell you that, especially when it comes to this because it's very, very particular in how it works. That's out of the way. Let's get right into our very first sheet. This is the same sheet you can download for free in the link below. There's a link to my Google Drive, I believe. And everything is there. There's all seven lines. You see four here. You'll see the rest later on. But we're going to go through these, and what happens is we'll count them together. We will clap and play them together, and then move to the next one and repeat, and repeat, and repeat until we're done the entire thing. You are totally allowed to fast forward. You are totally allowed to rewind and do it over and over again. And all of these things, all these lines with different rhythms and different ways of counting things are going to be helping you in so many different aspects. Now, you don't see a bunch of stuff here. You do not see half notes or whole notes. I don't even use those things, those type of notes, until level number two. This is level one. In the beginner package, which is what I'm kind of pushing right now, there are three levels, one, two, and three. We are on level one right now. We're on level one, technically point zero, and there's five sheets in every single level. So here we go. Going to be a bit of a long explanation for the first, first line, but the rest of it will flow so much quicker because once I get past this first line and, and explain why I do things the way I do, then you'll understand, and I hope that this will really just take you to the next level before you even know it. So, first things first, we have a few things to talk about. One is this. This is called a time signature, and the time signature is very important in two different ways. The first way is right there, and the second way is right there. Two different numbers. If you want to break it down, it's actually a fraction. Four over four. I'll give you an example. This is a fraction. This is a fraction, which is also the same as a half if you go to the lowest common denominator. And you also have other fractions you can incorporate in here. I'm putting fours at the bottom because four is one of the most common time signatures in music. Now what do these mean? Let me just erase all of this and show you what they mean because the top number tells you one thing and the bottom number tells you something else. The top number tells you how many beats are in a bar. What's a bar? Don't worry about it. We'll look at that in a second. The bottom number tells you how big each beat is. So how many beats in a bar? Four. How big is a beat? Not four, not four big, which is what I hear all the time in beginner students. It is a quarter, because in a fraction we would call this a quarter. This would be one quarter. If you are a big cooker or baker, you would know this all the time. It's a common thing to use is a quarter, or even a one-half, or a three-fourths. If you're in construction in North America, especially the United States, you will also use fractions all the time, right? Uh, Seven-sixteenths, that kind of stuff. All fun and games until it comes down to music when it just becomes the same thing over and over again of four-four time. So we have four beats in a bar and each beat is a quarter note. What's a quarter note? That's a quarter note. That's a quarter note. That's a quarter note. All of these are quarter notes this is not a quarter note. This is what's called an eighth note, and we are not there yet, so don't jump ahead too fast like I just did. Now, four beats in a bar. How many beats in a bar? Four. How big is a beat? Quarter. But where's a bar? Well, this is a bar right here, not the arch. This part is a bar. You might already know this. These are called bar lines. These are called bars. Same idea as a guitar. If you play guitar, maybe you do play guitar, we have six strings, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have frets, but those are not frets. These things are actually called fret bars, and the gap is called a fret, right? Same idea with this. These bar lines are the same as a fret bar. They separate the bars as they separate a fret with a fret bar. Kind of a weird reference, but if you play guitar, you understand. And since it's a musical instrument, I might as well use it as a reference. So we have bars. How big is a beat quarter? We have one, four of them, right? Two, three, four. 
that's really all we're doing in this sheet is we are counting out the beats. And we're counting out everything between the beats as well, which comes right here. So let's finish it off. After the bar line, first rule in when you're doing this fast is always put a one. No matter what comes after the bar line, it's this, 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 right? Looking for the bar lines, these tiny little dashes. Whatever comes after the bar line is a one. And a bit of a trick I tell my students is to go through the entire sheet before you do anything else and just put one, 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 forever. Just put a one because you're never wrong. It's the easiest answer. And it's always the first thing after the bar line. Whether it's a note or whether it's a, let's say, an eighth note rest, which comes later on, it's always going to be a one. It doesn't matter what it is. And think of it like this. It's a rear view mirror because when you're driving a car or your parents are driving a car or whoever's driving a car, their rear view mirror kind of keeps them from getting hurt from behind, right? It's that you're watching the cars behind you coming up too fast. You move out of the way because you saw it coming from behind you with your rear view mirror. So what do you do? Well, let's say I don't follow rule number three, which is write clearly and concisely. And I write massively large and massively ugly like this. Two, three. I have this ugly big one. One, two, three. I don't know why anyone would write, like, write like this. It's just too much. But just as an example, an exaggerated example, we have one, two, three. And then because I went through and I put a one after each bar line, I now have this rear view mirror where I got to three and I got now, I see a one here. Well, what happens is I'm missing something and I know that there's supposed to be four beats in a bar, but I have a one and I have a three. Well, where's four? It's supposed to be here, but that's a bar line. So why is a four under the bar line? Quite simple. I wrote too big. I wrote too messy. So what do I do? I erase it. I come back and I do it again. But following rule number three, write clearly and concisely. One, two, three, four, and we're finished. That's out of the way. Those explanations, I will not come back to that because it's so simple that I'm positive all of you have gotten this already. Second thing is, what are these? Because these things, there's way too many of them in a the bar. There's four here and there's four beats I need, so I have one, two, three, four, I'm set up, right? Each one of these is worth one beat, quarter note. Well, these things are not an entire beat. These are called eighth notes and they are worth half of a beat, or should I say 0.5 of a beat. I'm gonna say 0.5 for a few reasons. One is if I take a quarter note and I cut it in half, imagine that, cut in half. Well, technically I get two eighth notes, individual eighth notes. These are called eighth notes, little wings hanging off. But if I were to put them together, they would have a line attaching like this. So technically these two eighth notes together are the same as this one quarter note. Let me fix this. We don't like that weirdly cut in half quarter note. These two together, squish them together, it equals this. Cut this in half, I get each of these. Or I just bring it down to two eighth notes. So basically, I have one beat. And here, I also have one beat in total, the whole thing. But individually, it's worth 0.5. And individually, this is worth 0.5. And this is kind of a foreshadowing part because math is music and music is math. And if you don't like math, don't worry. Music is not that kind of math. It's fun math. If I have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, I now have 1. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 equals 1. So here, 0.5. 0.5 equals 1, which is also this. So what does this all tell you? Well, this is a long way of saying that two of these is equal to one beat. This bar here shows you this really well. Groups of two, group of two, group of two, group of two. So I have one beat, one beat, one beat, 
one beat. Well, I'm missing something. Now that's that's the big problem. And if you remember rule number two, it is only put what's needed and what is needed on the positive side of it is something under every single symbol. No matter what that symbol is, I want you to show me something. That's rule number two, or half of it technically. So I have one, two, three, four set up. Well, I'm going to put this symbol here, and I'm not doing math. This is not the foreshadowing I was talking about. I'll tell you about exactly the foreshadowing that I meant in a minute. But this plus sign, technically in music, stands for the word and. So when I see the plus, I now say and. And this is kind of an old-fashioned thing, and it's a foreshadowing that I'm going to mention in a minute again. So we have one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. Remember a few things. The beat comes first. If you have a group of eighth notes and they are both on and off the beat, on the beat is the beat, off the beat I get something else, and for eighth notes you put the plus for the and. I hope that made sense. Kind of like a rhyme. I didn't mean it to be like that. But this is the way it comes out sometimes because music has a bit of a flow to it. So we have one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. Put this into a bit more perspective. These two, one quarter note. Those next two are one quarter note. Even though they are connected in groups of four, it doesn't matter. That single line on top tells me it's an eighth note. And I know that two eighth notes together equals one beat, which is a quarter note. So there's the beat. There's the beat. Luckily, there's a big gap here. So I have quarter note and quarter note. That is a really weird looking quarter note. Finish this off together. One and two and three and four and. I know this is taking a long time with the first line. We're almost finished the first line. i got to explain a few more things for you because... I don't want to do them again. And this video is super important to just follow along as best you can. So stay with me. Keep your attention going. Now, why do I put the this plus symbol? Two reasons. One is this is ridiculous. I'm not going to write and under every single thing. That's ridiculous. That's too much. Second reason why I'm not going to put and is because, fix that. This A, we need it later on, and I'll tell you why in the uh, intermediate level stuff. That's the 16th notes. So we need the A later on. So don't put the A, don't use it, because it will be used later on. We don't want to confuse ourselves, especially beginner students who are trying to learn this kind of stuff. It's important to clarify. The second reason, well, maybe third reason now, why I don't use, why I use the plus sign is the AND symbol which is called the ampersand in uh, code, if you know this, is way too similar to this symbol, which is the treble clef. Really badly drawn treble clef. Let's see if I can make this way better. Treble clef. Ugh, terrible day. Anyways, if I just extend this part out and this part down, I now have a treble clef. This is why I don't use the and symbol. I have seen textbooks use the and symbol underneath all this stuff. They put and, they put and. I really don't like this. I've actually sent messages to the textbook company saying, please stop, and I've had zero replies. I think they just don't care because they do not, they do not really focus on this kind of stuff in the end. They're more worried about getting the information out and getting the textbooks printed. So if you are a textbook manufacturer, please make sure you are using the plus sign. It's going to make everyone's lives so much better. One and two and three and four and. Here's the very last reason why I use the plus sign, and this is why we have the actual plus sign when we're saying this kind of stuff, and that is the foreshadowing I mentioned. So here we go. Do some math with me. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. Three plus three is six. 
And last one, 10 plus 5 is 15. Just randomly chose it. Okay. Your grandparents, maybe your great-grandparents, who knows, great-great-great-great-grandparents, if this video lasts that long, they used to say something else instead of plus when they did this fast because they tried to memorize every single mathematical problem when they were kids. Multiplication tables, div dividing tables, or minus tables, and even plus tables. So you said 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2. They said it even faster by saying 1 and 2 is 2, 2 and 2 is 4, 3 and 3 is 6, 10 and 5 is 15. It was a way of saying it faster. Why? Because when you say plus, your mouth and your tongue have to do two different things in sort of two, one and a half directions, maybe two directions. When you say the word and, it's a single movement with your entire mouth. I know that someone might kind of debunk that. There's a lot more to it. But in the basic sense of how, how it works when you say these words, and is a single sound. Plus has multiple sounds in it. So saying and is faster. That's why they did this. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's why they did this. I hope you correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. But either way, we're going to say and, we're going to use plus, and that's the rule. If you use something different, by all means, just don't get confused because it will get confusing later on. So let's do this together. I'm going to simplify this because writing clearly and concisely is rule number three. You ready for this? Simple counting. I'm going to say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Whew, that was fast. Now, what I did, and this is really important, is I kept the beat one, two, three, four, steady, no matter what even if it is this fast with this many notes, I kept the beat all at the same time. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four. And that beat is always at the same time. Doesn't speed up, doesn't slow down. Really important to keep a steady. Maybe it might tell you to speed up later on in the music or slow down, that's fine. But if it doesn't, you have to keep it steady. So the default rule when you're playing rhythms, when you're playing music, when you're clapping anything, when you're doing anything to do with music at all, it is to keep it as perfectly steady as possible. I know nothing can be perfect, but your goal is that. So here we go. This is how it's going to work. I'm going to pull up a few things. You're going to see a wonderful piano in the bottom of the screen here with my hands here. And my hands can clap and I can do everything with you. And you're going to copy me as best as you can. So we're going to follow along with the counting on line number one. You're going to see my hands clapping the rhythm. And you're going to hear my voice counting the rhythm. And you're also going to hear something else called a metronome. And it's not a subway. It is this. It's a simple tick. Now that tick is each beat. So we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And you notice how the numbers, the beats, the pulses, all lined up with that tick, with the metronome. This will happen for every single line. So here we go. If you have your own metronome, this is 72 beats per minute. If you don't, you can always rewind the video, watch it again, whatever works for you. But here we go. Clap with me, count out loud, or even just whisper it to yourself because counting it out loud and saying it, vocalizing it, is going to help you really internalize all of these things. So here we go. Count in. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. No more. Once we hit the end of four at the very end there, we stopped. Maybe my camera is not always perfectly on with a bit of lag. I'm sorry about that, but I'm sure you can understand and you can follow along as best as you can. Let's do it one more time for safety, and the rest of it will just clap and count at once because you can always rewind the video. So here we go. All together, clap. I'm keeping one hand steady. Yes, I'm giving you clapping, clapping lessons here. One hand steady, the other hand moves. That's it. Make it easy for yourself. Doing all this is way too much movement. Control yourself. Control your hands. Control it, and you will sound and feel a lot better. Here we go. Counting in. One, two, three. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And we're done. Here we go. Now it goes faster. We are going to start by counting out number two. Are you ready? If you have the sheet printed out, please finish two, finish three, finish four. Use this as your guide. Go through and finish the entire thing on your own, and that way we can do this together and get it right, and you can check your answers versus copying your answers. You've got to do this. It's not that hard. Everybody can do this. I've never had a single student fail, ever. Not this, not ever. It's that easy. So here we go. We have ones already because I went through and put the ones. So let's count together and say it out loud as we do this. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. There's a bar line. One and two and three, four. Quarter notes, eighth notes. Watch for the differences. We have a bar line. We have a one. Two, three, and four, and there's a bar line. One, and two, and three, four. That's how fast it goes. Adding the metronome, adding our camera. Here we go. Counting in for number two, and you're going to clap and count with me. One, two, ready, go. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. One and two and three, four. One, two, three and four and one and two and three, four. That's it. Rewind it if you want to do it again. Number three. Here we go. We have. Just keep sliding. I'm sorry. There we go. Turn this away. Number three, we have first one's always a one. You can go through and put ones after the bar line if you want. We have a two, quarter note, eighth notes, three, and, four, and. There's the bar line. We have a one, and, two, and, three, four. We have a bar line. One, two, and, three, and, four, and. We have a bar line. One, and two and three and four. We have a bar line. One, two and three and four. And it's okay for mixing quarter notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, doesn't matter as long as you're following along with the beats. Individual beat, half a beat, half a beat. There's the beat, there's the off beat, there's the beat, there's the off beat. On beat, off beat, on beat, off beat. Basic terminology. You'll get the hang of it pretty quick. Next up, we have everything else that goes along with it. Let me actually put it on top. Number three. Ready? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four. One. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One, two and three and four and. 
done. Rewind if you want to. Maybe you're wondering why I have a piano here. Yes, you can hear it. Yes, it works. We won't use it right now. That comes later on. It's just where the camera is. Number four. Here we go. So we have the first one with one and two, three, four, and there's the bar line. Let me fix that and for you. Let me actually delete that and and make it way better. One, two, three, and four. Let me do that same thing with that four. I did the four backwards for some reason. Here we go, next bar line. One, and two, three, four, and. There's the bar line. You might not want to draw in on the bar line. I just do that to show you. It's just helpful. One, two, three, and four. And there's the bar line. We have a one, two, three, and four, and. You do not have to say everything I say. I just really vocalize this process where I say there's the bar line, there's the beat, there's the offbeat sometimes. It's just... I try to do this in different ways to help different types of students. You do it your way, whatever works, as long as you get the same results as me, it doesn't matter how you do it. Here we go. Number four, counting and clapping out loud. One, two, ready, go. One and two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four. One and two, Three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and that's it. In the package, when you download the package, you're going to get some recordings. They are at 120 beats per minute. Let me give you an example of 120 beats per minute, which means one and two, three, four, and one. Two, three, and four, one and two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and that would be number four again at 120. Don't worry about that. If you can't do it that fast, you can always get your own metronome and do it on your own. Your phones, your tablets, your computers, there's apps for free for metronomes all out there. It's so easy these days. There's no excuse not to have a metronome. It's free. You can even go to Google and type in metronome and you will find a metronome ready for you. Just slide it to the number you want. 72 is what we're using right now. And you will be set up for days. So here we go. We are going to pull up the next and last section with numbers five, six, and seven. I hope you're ready. We're almost there. So number five, we have one, two, three and four and there's the bar line one and two and three and four and all eighth notes across the entire bar there's the one two three and four and there's a bar line fix that and here's a one two three and four and there's a one two three four and hopefully you got the same answers as i did you ready for everything else one two clap and count one two three and four and one and two and three and four and one two three and four and one two three and four and one two three four and we're done. Next up, we have number five. Number six, I'm sorry, number six. Ready, we have a one, two, three, and four. There's a bar line, one and two, three quarter notes. They get, your, they get their own beats, four and, we have a one and two, three, four and we have a one two three four and 
we have a one and two and three, four. I've done this so long, I know it sounds like I'm doing it too easy for you. Don't worry if you struggle. Just watch. Here's what I watch for. I know the ones of the bar line. That's easy. If I see a bar line, let me just erase this first. Two bars here. If I see a bar line, I know that I can put a one after it. I know that if there's a quarter note, I can put a four before it. I know that if I see the bar line again, I'm reversing with two eighth notes, two of them, well, the first eighth note going in reverse is going to be the end. The next one will be the beat. If it's an eighth note with a single line like that, then if you're like Sherlock Holmes, you can just kind of figure it out. You deduce the answer, you go back and forth, and you can figure out where the rest of it kind of falls into play because it is always in the correct order. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And everything in between, it's always in that order, left to right, like the original Mario games, always left to right, never right to left. Always. Okay, let's count and clap. Put this up here. Here we go. Out loud with me. One, two, number six. One, two, three and four. One and two, three, four and one and two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one and two and three, four. Done. So easy. I'm betting that if you are following along with this video and you're doing everything that I'm doing, listening carefully, and even writing down on your own sheet that you printed out from the description below, you will be rocking this. It is not very hard. And for the teachers, which I've had a few over the years say, why don't we do half notes and whole notes when we first start out? Why are we doing eighth notes? Well, there's a long answer for this. I'll give you the short answer. In my experience, after doing this package and this work course, everything with my, with over a decade with my students, is I find the best results when I hone down on two things. What is a beat and what is smaller than a beat? It's easy to do a what's more than a beat, what's bigger than a beat. Young students, young kids figure this out really easily. It's intuitive. But when they really visualize and see firsthand at the very beginning what one is and what less than a one is, what a smaller beat is or a smaller off beat is, everything else becomes even easier and they've already taken on the biggest hurdle that is learning to count rhythms. It's going smaller than a beat, subdividing. So that's why I do it. That's the short answer. I can give you a longer answer. I have a hundred more reasons, but for right now, let's just stick to that. And that's my short answer to keep this video a little bit shorter. Last one, number seven. Here we go. Hopefully you finished it and you are just checking your answers with one and two and three and four. One and two, three and four. And bar line one and two, three and four. And one and and two, three, and four, and there's the bar line, one, and two, three, four, and almost there, everybody. Here we go. Number seven. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, Three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two, three, four and. There's a bit of a pattern to all these rhythms, especially number seven. Number seven takes the different combinations in various ways and puts them all together. And you're done. Congratulations. If you followed all of this, 
The rest of it will be so much easier as you go forward, I promise. The only hard thing is to get the rests involved, and rests are not that difficult. It's just understanding when and when not to clap or play with your counting, because when it's all notes like this, it's super obvious. But that's a conversation for a later day. Thank you for watching. I want to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Proteus Ed. Proteus, P R O T E U S E D, Ed. And that's on YouTube. And you're probably watching it there, anyways. So thank you very much. Please leave a comment below. Please let me know what you think. Please send me a message, send me a question, anything you like. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. And again, Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.